again, we love having you all on with us, and we love your uh, engagement with us. So this is how to use LinkedIn for new business development. So again, as we uh, get through this, uh, most of you know me, some of you don't. I'm founder and CEO of Forward Progress, Dean Delisle. I work with uh, our curriculum here, and most of uh, my curriculum staff does an amazing job with finding out research and things that we need to know uh, to actually get um, to actually get that to the next uh, to get you to the next level. Uh, so, uh, with that being said, uh, we've trained and coached over eighty-five thousand people. Um, and yes, Maria, everybody will get a copy of the presentation as well as the recording, uh, and then uh, maybe even some access to additional materials. We'll see how far we get along today. So please stick around to the end, and we will get you included. Now, we have uh, corporate training programs as well as public training programs. So we do uh, training and coaching in social media, online marketing, email marketing. We also have marketing services. We post and blog over 10,000 blogs and posts a month. We just hit that hat mark at the end of the year, and we're on pace to go to 20,000 blogs and posts. So our team on the other side helps us understand what's working, what's not working each and every day with the intent to, convert, to build community, build relationships and trust, and convert things, okay? Convert people into new business and build relationships. So we're going to show you the business, um, the, the business development side of this, of how you can use this to generate new business. Uh, we also deliver over a million emails a month, sometimes a couple million emails a month. So we integrate email marketing, and all of it ties together. So let's, let's get started into some of the content. Now, to maximize your learning, we want to make sure that you turn off your cell phone. I'm putting my phone on Do Not Disturb. I had to close my office door to make sure there's no distractions, just so that you can focus. And please grab something to write with so that you can have a, a sheet of paper and write down just one action that you're going to take away from here. We're going to give you some assignments at the end, specific things to do, but maybe you're busy like the rest of us, and if you could do one thing, one movement towards your new business development, we know it's going to make a difference. Okay. Now, if you want to engage with us, most of you have been playing along and engaging with us. Um, we want to make sure that you understand the go-to webinar taskbar. The most important thing is that you're muted so that we can get a good recording. Okay. With that being said, the questions area, we want to make sure that you know that that is where you type your questions. And we've already had about 30 questions, 40 questions in there. So again, if you want to test it out, just say hello or hi. Let us know that you found it. And if you lose our, our slides, it should say how to engage with the GoToWebinar interface uh, or the ability to do questions. Right. So, so now, um, when you do that, uh, you can click on that little flower that I'm showing at the bottom, and that little flower will bring up the screen, right? Cool. All right, so, so see what that looks like? Good. So everybody's finding that. I see some of you switching off, clicking the flower, and getting the slides back. Now, in social networks, we always start off with where do you stand, right? So everybody is at different levels. So real quick, just type into the questions area your favorite social network, right? I know we were talking about LinkedIn again, but, but some of you have your very favorite, right? Like you're, it's on the top of your phone. You're, you're almost uh, addicted to it. So what is your favorite, right? So what is the one that you like? Take them all away. I just want this one. So and we have a lot of Facebooks, a lot of LinkedIn's. Some Instagrams, Flickr. There you go. I like Flickr too. <laughs> I'm no favorites. I'm a rookie. <laughs> you guys crack me up. All right. So, and this is global, right? So, LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram seem to be our top contenders with a few Pinterest. Uh, and remember, YouTube is a social network. Some of us are, are connected to that. We don't even realize we're connected to that when we're watching all those videos. Twitter, yeah, we have Twitter, which is huge this year and last year. Twitter is probably one of the ones that is, has really solidified itself. As long as its stock can hang on, it's got a lot, it has a ton of longevity. It's, it's working into school systems, municipalities. We have some good stuff. All right, good. So now when we talk about this, this uh, let's talk about some of the things that stop us from succeeding. So the barriers, right? So a lot of times in business development, and we see this in large companies, small companies, we see this in individuals, even with our top producers. We have million dollars, um, uh, you know, top producers that want to get to $3 million, right, in volume. 
So, so now when we do this, um, you know, we have uh, some fear that stands in the way, and we have a whole course on fear, but let me just touch on, you know, I don't have enough time, and a lot of you have been through our training where we show you how to develop as much business as you need and how to fill your pipeline in less than 20 minutes a day, right? So this is a mindset, right? This is something that, that, that blocks us because we're like, oh my gosh, this is so time consuming. And it can be if you don't manage it or if you don't go in with intention. We'll talk about that. I don't know why, uh, what my voice should be, you know? So a lot of us think we need to be somebody different online. Right, so, so we need to be somebody different. No, we want you to be the same closer business development relationship person online as you are in person. Right, and we'll give you some, some equivalencies and some things to work on around that. I worry about negative comments. Well, yes, but if you're not online and there's negative comments are happening, you could lose some great referrals or big deals because you have this fear of not even paying attention. So it's better to pay attention and have a good offense, right, which becomes a good defense when you do need it. And hopefully none of us are getting those negative comments, but they do happen. We've had people say negative things about me, about our company. You know, it's just the way the world works. The bigger your company works, the more successful you are, people are going to show up on the Internet. And sometimes they hide behind fake people, which angers me a lot. So that's why we do a lot of reputation management as well. Um, and then I don't know what to post, right? The fear of I don't know or, you know, as we say, the fear of looking stupid. Now, on the flip side of this, with the popularity of social networks, where you're like, well, Dean, you know, Facebook has over a billion people. It's a small country. LinkedIn is now over 250 million members, right? Well, there's a couple of things that make it an addictive component and, and our clients are on the other side, our clients' connections are on the other side and there's something that we study called FOMO, right? It's called the fear of missing out. Stephen, we should put those acronyms up there when we have acronyms. So fear of missing out, right? So FOMO. So write that down. There's a lot of research on that. We're going to be bringing you classes on this but when we study from a marketing perspective, why people respond, why they're clinging on to Pinterest, YouTube, LinkedIn, all the social network sites, right? It's because people have a fear of missing out. It's, it's it, because we have a core human need to connect. Now, we can take advantage of this as being smart business development people by going in and being the expert in the room, right? And so we're going to give you some cool things to do this, but let's cover some fundamentals. And we see this all the time. The issue with social networks is that people are doing a bunch of things, but they're not producing results. Now, I'm going to put a poll up on the screen. You know, so uh, as we look at this, we just want to understand. I'm going to launch this poll. I'm going to only give you 30 seconds. I'm going to make sure everyone can see it. It tells us every, it's on everybody's screen. And click on that, um, you know, little flower if you don't see it. But we, we're going to allow, we can, it's saying that it's on almost everybody's screen. It's traveling around the world, right? And it says, have you increased your new business with the use of social networks, right? <laughs> right. And and so click on the button that makes sense for you. And I know some of you are just on the phone, so we'll, you know, we'll uh take you in there. So now we're at 30 seconds. I'm going to I'm going to switch this off cuz we have a lot of content today. So I'm going to share this and 70% of you were able to get in and uh I, I appreciate you that participated. Now, 4% said they're getting enough. Uh 43% some need more. We all need more. Okay? Even when you get to enough, right? You set new goals to get more. And then we have 53% at none, right? And so this is why, you know, we do these workshops and we have these trainings and we have corporate training programs because it is still new and it still changes. Have you ever noticed that when you log in, they moved something that you really liked and they moved it or they took it away or they hit it somewhere on you and you're like, why did they move that, right? Well, it's ever changing, you know, and, and it's based on how people use things and things like that. So uh, think about what that uh, looks like, but that's why you need to stay on top of this stuff. Now, our marketers, right, I said we have marketers, and you have marketers that push things out. And if you're a marketer, this is a cool thing. The content marketing is really big in, in this year in 2014. As we push it out, we want people to engage with it, right? And so that's the job of our marketers. But really the job of us in business development is to build relationships and trust. 
And where we see that that is a big deal is, is where in social networks, where we get that real connection, we get you showing up with all of you and your authenticity, right? builds trust with your network and this is where we see more referrals coming and we see more business getting attracted to you and it creates viral activity when you attach to your content right and we're going to show you some specific examples here so now think of the fact that I remember how I said this is the same thing as if um, I'm going to talk at a, uh, a club here in the city uh, this afternoon and and we talk about the fact that you know they're like man we're really good once somebody gets in the door but we haven't figured out that online thing and I said well we all belong to social networks or we run social networks and all of us are social networks um, and a lot of times we treat the online stuff differently than if we were hosting an event at our organization right so what we tell our companies and our in our in our students is that think about this you guys are hosting the ultimate event every day when you log in right this is what we call the hosting mentality where where you go in and you are the host of your network in LinkedIn you're the host of a group in LinkedIn you're the host of your Facebook your Instagram your Pinterest right and think of it like an event and if you were going into that event with the intent of developing business, right, and, and let's say you have an event and you only have two hours or an hour to spend at that event, you're going to sit there and you're going to be really intentional, especially my top producers. You go in with a game plan of who you're going to leave there with. It's almost like dating, right? So, so you want to find the optimal next piece of business. You know your target. You know who you're going after. You know what they look like. You know what they sound like. And if you do your homework, you you seek them out in there, and you and you and you leave with them in terms of their information, a next meeting. You really connect. You know that art, right? We all know that in business development. Well, social networks aren't that much different online. Right? You just have to treat them like you do in a live event. So try that today. When you go in there, you know, write that down. Say, I'm just going to host my LinkedIn today. Right? I'm going to go in and I'm going to look at the people that are in there and maybe you have some undesirables in there and you can hide those people and hide the connection to those people. Now, where the magic comes in in social networking that is no different than what we've known up to this point is that when we really do a good job of connecting to somebody, we have to have... How many, how many interactions do we have to have with somebody to build trust? Like how many meetings and cups of coffee and interactions do you have to have with somebody? Type this into your questions area. Do you need to have before somebody trusts you enough to give you their very best referral? This is a global average, an intergalactic global average. Okay, I've got some coming in at seven. Go ahead and type that into the questions area. How many interactions? I've got six, five, three to five. All right, so the, the global average, you guys are real close, is 7 to 10, right? So it's 7 to 10 depending on the person, the product, this, that, you know, what you're connected to, right? So, so it, it, the global average is 7 to 10, but we're social networks. If we can get over that fear and we can be a real trusted person in our network, in our, you know, mini network there, right, our, our, our LinkedIn, our Facebook, if we can become the source, just like when you go to a chamber all the time or a country club or a gym all the time, they're like, hey, there's that, there's that mortgage person, you can trust them, there's that financial person, there's that, there's that social media person, there's that sales, you know, that sales trainer, there's that, there's that lawyer that you can trust, that's the person you go to, right, somebody was asking me last night for an intellectual property attorney and there's somebody in my LinkedIn network that we have a great relationship in LinkedIn and we've never had a cup of coffee and I'm like wait a minute we exchange all the time and so I went and I found the person we talked last night and it was a great meeting and now we're going to talk about other business together but they're in my LinkedIn network but that's because we've created trust by exchanging things online and we've never met and it's a really cool thing because I was like, wow, this was cool, you know, so, and, and I have a, a referral for them and uh, vice versa. So anyway, um, but we've had a lot of, we've had more than seven to ten in interactions, and I'm going to show you some interaction points. So what happens in social networks, and a lot of you have seen this, is that there's two and three degrees of separation right so so as you have those touch points you gain that trust in their network not just with this person sue who's represented on the screen but now you have like two and three degrees of separation and the numbers are staggering right 
So when we look at this, um, how many, uh, just ballpark, how many connections do you guys have on LinkedIn right now? Just type in the number, you know, just a gut check here of how many people you have. So I'm going to see the smallest number and biggest numbers. So we have some people at 2,500, some people at 100. And Stephen, I want to put that slide back in here that has like a regular number, not the 3,000. So let's make note of that. Um, so when I look at this, it's, okay, so let's say the average in here is like 250, right? Well, with, with 250 people, and you see how 3,000 people here, you know, give you 15 million, and how many people are adding, um, yeah, the 500 plus person. Uh, so, so when you look at the number here, the average user has 240 connections. That gives you one degree from over 35,000 people and two degrees from 3.2 people. So if you just show up some of the time consistently with who you are as an expert in your network, people are going to get to know you. Right? So when we do when we do social media people, you know, when we do social media profiles for people, we have services where we write LinkedIn profiles for entire say, you know, for entire companies. And so when we do that process, we look at what is, what does the company want to be known for and what does this team want to be known for and this team want to be known for and what are the main things that we want to be known for so that when our network is connecting to us and they're searching you know, there's millions of searches all the time, every single day going on on mobile devices and everything else. We want to come up to the top. So one of the things we say is we say your profile is your first conversation in this big networking event, right? And so you want to build credibility and reputation, right? So, so we want to know what you're going to do for others. Just like if I were to have you stand up and say, all right, everybody do a 30-second introduction on yourself as we go around the room, right? You've been in part of those, and some of you panic, and some of you are like, oh, yeah, I got this down. I know exactly what I want this room to know me for, right? And so you stand up, and, and you have it. You deliver it, and you nail it, and everyone knows that's the person I need to talk to. In that moment, they know. Well, in LinkedIn, that's the equivalent of people searching. And when you're connected to people, so if I'm connected to Norman or Noreen or, or, or Michael or Tara, you know, I'm connected to you guys and somebody in the network is typing in maybe social networking, right, or online marketing, hopefully I come up and you might go, oh, yeah, you know, I've got, the, I've got a great uh, person for you to connect with. Even if we haven't met, we've just had exchanges online, you start to build some trust because you see that we work real hard to pull stuff together and put some good stuff out there. We spend a lot of time and we're passionate about it. We work hard to do the very best job we can and no, we're not perfect. None of us are. So, so when we look at this, we want you to be that expert business person in there so that you build a relationship with your network so that you can develop business. Now you're like, wow, Dean, that sounds hard. What do I have to do? You just have to have a decent profile. Right? So if we think about this, I just want to know, I'm not going to call anybody out. This is anonymous, but you just click on the screen here. Do you have a complete current LinkedIn profile. So if I were to go there, would it tell me exactly, right, what you do, super clear, and would it have evidence that you're the very best person in my network to do that job or function, right? So think about this, right? So, so now you want a referral from me, my very best referral. We've had, we've had seven interactions, and now I have my very best referral. And I go into my network, and I type in intellectual property attorney. Okay? That's what I did last night. And I looked, and I was like, oh, there she is. That's right. We talk all the time. And, and I've talked to other people that are connected to her, and I just trust she's going to do a good job. Well, you need to be the person on the other end of that search. You need to be in relationship and connected enough, okay? So the profile is the start, okay? So when we, when we look at this, and I'll share these results here with you real quick just so you can see. All right, there you go. Okay, now, when we look at this, they give you a little meter like profile strength, but really it's about, you know, is it clear, is it concise, and yes, you can look at the profile strength on here to get that gauge. But we want you to be complete and clear in your first conversation, and a lot of times, the, the experience, the summary, um, who you are, the fiber of who you are with your causes and experience, and maybe publications, and maybe your uh, projects that you work on and things like that, this is what people look at and they, and they judge you.
They judge the, the type of referral they're going to give you. They judge they might read this and they might get a different opinion and say, wow, they, you know what, they really don't look like the expert that my client is asking for. Uh, it's a big a client for me. I've got to think twice before I make this recommendation. So, so even though it's a good person, because what they're going to do is go into Google and when they type your name into Google, if you've ever tried that, and, and even if you have like a common name, so I'm just looking down the list to see if I have any common names. When they type in the name, they might type in the name and the profession, right? So a lot of times people, you know, I, have a, I, I don't have a common name, so you type in Dean Delisle, I pretty much can dominate that, that space. But maybe it'd be, you know, Stan Smith, um, you know, uh, attorney, you know, or something like that where, where you have that... Um, where you have that, but, but what's going to happen is it's going to come up. Maybe they type in you with your company name. So as we do, uh, yeah, Kristen Smith, it's always Smith. <laughs> right, and some of you are like, hey, I don't have that problem. Right, yes, marketing our clients, good reputation. Right, so, so now all of a sudden, you want to make sure your business name and you have that good footprint, and this is where it starts with the content in your profiles. And if you're pulling your name up and you see your other profiles, like we'll find a lot of MySpace accounts, I'm sure none of you had those, but we'll find Plaxo and all this other stuff, and it might show traces that you're a different person than who you are today. You need to go in and pay attention to that, okay? That's a reflection on you. Now, another reflection is a reflection of skills. A lot of people dismiss this because of the way that, that you know, it's been diluted in the network a little bit. But if you don't have 50 skills in there, LinkedIn is going to ask your network to tell them what your skills are. You don't want your network necessarily, especially if you've got 200, 500 people that you don't know, telling LinkedIn what skills you should have you should be telling the world what skills you have and then earning that through showing up with those skills. Does everybody get that? Say yes, because this is a big thing that I just said. You should own your skills in LinkedIn. You can type 50 of them, five zero. And all of us have five zero. I looked at uh, as many as I could. I know we have several hundred people, but I looked at as many as I could. No, not the fewer the better. Use, hey Chuck, I haven't talked to you in a while. We have to get together. Um, I haven't, you know, no, I want you to choose 50 skills, right? And you can adjust these. I can't go through this in this class, but you can adjust these and you can prioritize them as you move along. But pick 50 and then see what your network starts picking because LinkedIn will go, oh, all of a sudden Chuck thinks you're good at this. Well, maybe you did that 20 years ago and you're good at it, but it's not who you know, you know, who you want to be known for today. So you can judge whether you want to take all those suggestions or not. Right? So cool. So think about that, but make sure they're all legit. Right? We want to be authentic in our skills. Right? And then more new items that I really love are video because you can express yourself. Video is so easy to do now. You can do it with your cell phones. You can do it with a quick digital camera. There's so many uh, devices to do it. This webinar will become a video. We'll go on YouTube and we'll get into our profile. Right, Stephen? You make sure that all those get into our profile. So that is super cool that we have that evidence. And then we use our slides, like our PowerPoint slides as well, to take those slides, right? To take those slides and put them into SlideShare, and LinkedIn owns SlideShare. So if you don't use SlideShare and you have PowerPoint, write down slideshare.net. There's a, there's a $1,000 tip right there. If you don't earn $1,000 off of that and you're doing slides and put that on there, Come see me, okay, because you're definitely doing something wrong. But you can attach that to your profile, and now you have a visual profile with video and with PowerPoints. And most of us have that, even with PDF files. Okay, so think about what that looks like. So very cool. Now, um, oh, here's, our, here's our, one of our students, Spencer. Spencer has done an amazing job out there. Right, so when he, he has great PowerPoints, he does media, PR, and all kinds of cool stuff, right, with his clients. And so as he as he works on this stuff, he has um, great content attached to it. So and Spencer, you're actually on with us today. Good to see you on there. Uh, and so I, I picked his profile because it's just one of those that he's done a lot of work on. He does a great job. He connects well to people out there. He has Spencer Connect, which I encourage you to check out. 
and, and just is, is a good what we call a model student or model citizen out there, right? Um, so anyway, uh, uh, think about if you look that clear in what you do, okay? And so I encourage you to check out some of our student profiles in doing that. Now, we also say when you post, you are speaking. A lot of people don't realize this. They think that they're announcing. Right? That's what a mark let the marketer figure the announcements out. You guys need to start a conversation. So I always say picture that you have you're walking into the ultimate networking event. Have you guys ever been to like the ultimate networking event where you go, I can't miss this. Everyone I need to meet is gonna be there. Even if I work out with the walk out with the worst person in the room, I know I'm going to generate business from that, right? You have to go to it. You guys know those events. Well, LinkedIn can become that. So visualize and picture as you connect to those people. When you post, when you share, right, you are actually starting a conversation. So when you walk into the room, picture that you're walking up to, right, think about, you know, think about when you walk up to that person what you're saying because this will attract that person to you in that conversation in that language right and so those of you that blog those of you that have other things can reference a conversation around that so don't say hey go check out my blog say um, you know start a conversation about the blog and then provide a link back to the blog Right? Or if there's a news article that you want to share, you can start with a thought-provoking thing of what would you say? I thought this was interesting. Did you see what the Fed said today? <laughs> you know, something like that where it's a conversation. Because remember how I said that people have a core human need to connect, right? They get stimulated by conversation. That's why social networking and social media has taken off. And that's why it's a problem today because so many people have FOMO and they're in their devices that they are forgetting how to make eye contact and talk. And that's another one of our classes where we teach people how to get into technology, generate trust, generate business, and then get out of the technology and have face-to-face -face eye contact meetings, even if it's on technology with Skype, right? We want to get you in the technology and out of the technology, and we want you in there 20 minutes a day, right? Not, not 20 hours a day. Okay, so that's a whole different level of relationship and trust that you build when you can do that. So let's show you some movements that you can do. So first of all, we have value-based posting. Make sure that you're contributing and adding value, right? The other thing is make sure that you're growing your network with the right people. Think about the best targeted people and add those. In our social jack training, we have what we call our ID40 team or our, our top social jack team, right? And so what we do is we look for uh, building a team of people in our social networks, engaging with them with the intent to build relationship, trust, and referrals, right? So think about this. Think about this. Right? What I said, you're building relationship, you're building trust with the intent to get referrals and to give referrals to other people. Right? When you feel good and you have people in your network, isn't it cool that you have people that you can rely on to give that business to and they feel the same way about you, but you have to create that wiring. Okay, we, we teach in our courses something called social and emotional intelligence, which can happen in person or online. But if, but if you don't practice that, you look just like a marketer or a spammer or somebody that's in the corner that's afraid to talk, right? There's, that, there's that, that extreme of what type of person you are. What we want you to do is be connection, relationship, engaged with people. So let's talk about how some of that looks. So like when you connect to somebody, right, be personal. Reference the meeting, like when you ask for a connection, put a custom message in there. Include that personal note. In fact, LinkedIn has done this. They say include a personal note. Set that appointment. Add a phone number, right? Let them know how to get a hold of you, right? Yeah, right, so, so Spencer is like, when people try to connect to you, say, don't use the template. And when you meet somebody, ask them, I put this on this previous, this is huge, it, are you on LinkedIn? Is it okay if we connect, right? So you guys can connect to me, you know, uh, I love when people connect to me. Just send me a note and tell me what you see in it for us to connect. Why should we connect, right? Maybe there's some mutuality, there's some partnership in there, whatever it is, 
put that in there when you connect. Right? I love to connect to people that are thought provoking like that. That is huge and your network loves it too. See, people are collect connecting collecting so many people and that's great for marketers, but really relationship people, do we really want to manage 3,000 or believe that we it's even possible for us to manage 3,000 relationships? If we're a marketing person, that's okay. But if we're a business development person that's a million dollar top producer that we've studied and we've trained and coached globally people about this, we know for a fact that they have sacred relationships that they manage in various layers. And that's our social jack system where we teach you how to manage those, work less, be with less people, and generate more. Now again, there's a marketing model, right? There's a marketing model. And there's a business development model. We want you to get this business development game. You get this, I guarantee you, I promise you, your business will increase, your referrals will increase. We see it all the time. Our clients get inbound referrals on a daily basis. Just like I was dishing out last night, I get those every day through this exact same system. Now, there's different interaction points or networking points, right? Just like you're in a live event. There's the home, right? So, and Chuck, Chuck, you made a very valid statement. I have far too many connections to manage with trust. I'm going to pare them down. Well, what you can do, let me give you a quick tip here, because you don't need to get rid of them. Maybe you just need to pare them down. So, like, if you were going to have a, a meeting, right, I always say, would you invite all 3,000 or 200 or 500 people in your LinkedIn? Would you invite them into your home or into your next networking event, would you be okay if they all showed up and you go, well, maybe not. You should see what some of them post, right? But maybe they're really well connected. They just don't have any etiquette, social networking skills. Do you ever have that where you have like a party and you're almost afraid to put it out there because you're afraid of the people in your network that might show up? I'm, am I the only one that's thought that way or is that like anybody else think that way, right? So LinkedIn is like that, right? So you have this big networking event and you still have people that are like okay to connect to, but it's like you don't want to mix them in with the high-end clients. <laughs> well, the cool thing is with this, like when you have like, you know, this interaction on the home that we talked about, see if I have this, I don't know if I have this screenshot, okay? But on your home page, on any post, right? We always say when you log into LinkedIn, Congratulations, these are your people, because that's what it shows you. It shows you your connections and a few advertisements mixed in. But you can go into the updates and the shares and things like that and throttle that. When you go in there, you can highlight and hide anybody you want. So Chuck, those people that are like, you know, maybe not the exact connection, but that maybe they're connected to good connections, right? You can hide them so that you don't have to weed through those people to get to the good conversations that are going on. So it would almost be like walking into a room full of 200, 300, 400 people and taking the 10 best people in the room or the 20 best people or the 40 best people, as we would say, we show you how to manage 40, take those 40 best people and say, come on, let's go over to this room and have some really good deep conversation, build our relationship and exchange some business, develop some business. Do you guys get this? Say yes if you get this because this is like a big, big deal right here. So what you're doing is you're taking this big network that you're collecting and testing relationships, you're hiding the people that don't matter. And we've got like 100 things that we teach you in our class. I'm trying to get to the things that I think can help you guys based on your questions. So now when you do that, you just highlight the person and you click hide, 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 hide. Cool, right? And now all of a sudden, next time you log in, guess what? You just see the people you want to see. And Stephen, you're getting questions. Keep up with those. Okay, so, so think about what that looks like. Okay, so now this is your networking event. You can hide the people that don't matter, and next time you log in, that's a pared down networking event. Now, you didn't disconnect from the people, right? But, but you, can, you can now take it to that, that next level, right? So now you can say, hey, these are just the people I want to connect to. All right, all good. Yes, yeah, Stephen, we'll get to your questions. Stephen, I need you to get to those questions. Thank you. All right, now, this is one of our worksheets, right, our social jack system, where we are looking at um, 
you know, sort of what we do is we say we set an, an outcome or an intention before we log in. And we say we're going to get two appointments out of this. So Chuck, maybe you go in and you say, I'm going to get two small business, uh, family businesses out of here, business owners. Those are the two people I'm walking out of here with with those appointments. And these are the activities that you're going to do, which we train you on those activities as far, part of our full training. But these little things I'm giving you today, you write them down and you do them, I guarantee you're going to get some movement out of there. All right, good. Now then we looked at the, uh, uh, this is the advanced people search. So let's say you want to hunt for new business. I love hunting. As much as I love the referrals, some of us still love the hunt. Does anybody still love just like going into somewhere like a, an event and meeting people and hunting and finding the exact person that they didn't know before that just, that they know how to hunt, right? You guys know what the new person, the next new person looks like that you haven't met yet. You could meet them in a Starbucks or in an elevator, walk up to them, and you're like, you're the one, <laughs> you know? It's so exciting. So the thrill of the hunt. Steven, do that. I'm going to do the thrill of the hunt. I'm going to do one of those coming up because I love just, I can spend a whole day on this, okay? But anyway, so go into advanced people search, right? And type in your wish list where it says keywords and just type in the person that you're looking for. It's like, you know, dating, right? So type in like, you know, I'm looking for this person, right? So just type in the three words that best describe that person and press search and see what comes up. You're going to get first, second level connections and group members. That should be enough to keep you busy for a little while. And then if you guys need more of this stuff, we can take you into, um, you know, our business to, uh uh, development training, if that makes sense for you guys, but but just try it because I love when people come back and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I saw this person. It could be somebody that you knew too that you just forgot about, or that they're connected to, right? And so then you can just, if they're first level connections, you can you know send a message to them right away and go, hey, it's been too long. Let's get on the phone, right, Chuck? It's been too long. Let's get on the phone. So so you know when you see somebody on your screen. You're like, bam, man, it's time for a cup of coffee, right? It's time to get together. So now when you do that, you have that holy smokes moment where you have, like, all that information. And you know what's cool with this? Unlike the old days, I always say the old days, unlike the old days, you can click on them and see all this data. You can see, like, you have nine shared connections with this person. You can look. Right? It's just amazing the data that's at our fingertips. Cool. Now think about what that search, look for right? So do a search, look at your screen, make a move. Make sense? Just time yourself, try it. Cool. Now, how often, I'm going to put another poll up here. I just want to know, how often do you guys post on your LinkedIn every day? How much, how often do you show up with conversations? I just want to see what our audience has. I love getting just feedback from you guys. I'm going to let this only go for 30 seconds because I want to get to some of these questions. Steven, make sure you're teeing up some good questions for me too here because I want everyone to get from these answers. Okay, sorry I cut that off, but we're, uh, I want to move along here. So in here, I had about 70% of you vote, 6% of you are daily. This is just comparative to the audience, so you guys can see this on the screen. 8% several times a week, and this is global, right? About 11 countries on with this. 17% several times a month, 40% once in a while, 29% never. Now, a lot of times in that never, or once in a while, I have my compliant folks. Now, when you think about the compliance, now I came out of Merrill Lynch, so I understand compliance. But compliance dictates that you can't give it certain advice or you can't advise people in a certain way online because there's securities violations. And again, remember the fear factor. We deal with this with our financial institutions. We deal with banks and insurance, right? We see this all the time. But the one thing that is, that is pretty amazing is that they don't tell you you can't engage with other people. So what if you just lived in the search, right? What if you just lived in the search and had conversations and built a network? There's no policy that I can find that says that you cannot do that, right? 
So think about what that looks like. So we say set the hook, convert it to an appointment, get out of LinkedIn, and get to the Starbucks, get to the table, get to the meeting, get to the phone conversation, get to the Skype, get to the eye-to-eye, -eye, face to face, voice to voice. Right? So don't get hung up in this, right? Don't get up in, and and so now there is group diving that we call this, and, and again, based on time, I'm just gonna uh, you know, and Michael, just check your uh, policy because we've written a ton of policies, so check your policies in there. Now, in in uh, groups, they work the exact same way as your network, although the beautiful thing about groups is now all of a sudden you have this amazing group of people that are not directly connected to you, but they, they fit a certain profile based on the profile of the group. So it's like going to that ultimate networking event. So if your ideal group of people are attorneys or financial people or business owners, look for those types of groups, join them, get accepted, and then go have conversations with them. And then when it feels right, convert them to a phone call because you can direct message anybody in a group. So now if there's 10,000 people in a group, you just got access to 10,000 more people that you can direct message and convert to a phone call. You have more networking events than you can possibly handle. We show you that in our part of our business development stuff too. But, but just take it on as a simple task of going into a group and testing it as if it were a networking group, right? Have fun with it, right? And then, and then use some conversion techniques. Find relevant discussions too. There are... You know, there are uh, searches in here, so you can click on search and really, you know, have a nice search and go in there and find the conversations. Wouldn't that be cool if you walked into a, if you walked into a, a you know, let's say you're, you're uh, you know, in investment banking or you're looking for investment uh, folks and things like that, and you walk into a big networking event, like I'm going to be at the Union League uh, later today, and I walk in there, and I walk in the room, and I look around, and a big arrow is like pointing on people, going, these people are your people over here in the corner, and they're talking about something that you need to jump in on, a topic that you really know a lot about, and you can add value. So what's interesting is you can do that in LinkedIn. So very cool stuff. You just do your search, and you go on. Cool. All right, now... When we look at this, here is your assignments, right? And let's, um, real quick, before we get into your assignments, like everybody needs something, right? And we don't like to bother people, so we only want to send you things that are relevant to you. So on your screen, if we can assist you with more information on any of this stuff, maybe some of you just need more coaching and training, look on your screen. Right, click on the little flower if you don't have your screen up. Click on the little flower. See some of you are on multiple screens. And we're just going to leave this up for about 30 seconds. So let me talk through your assignments real quick while you're clicking. And when I look at this, the first thing is fix your profile. So if you didn't write that down, take one more look at that. Make sure it's relevant. I would say Google yourself too. Actually, we should put that on here, Stephen. Everybody should Google themselves on a regular basis. Build your network on a regular basis. Add one, two people, even a week, right? You saw the exponential growth of your network. Be social, right? Have meaningful conversations, provide value only 20 minutes a day, and be present. Okay? So, so let me uh, close this out. I appreciate all you guys that clicked on that. We'll make sure that you get some, you know, information and webinars specific to some of the things that you're looking to do with this there. Okay, now, when we look at this, right, we look at your assignment sheet, and again, we'll send this out to you. Stephen, make sure everybody gets their assignments in the slide deck here. Um, a lot of times, people just need to develop more, and a lot of you said, you know, you, over 50% of you said you need more coaching and training. So we have coming up as part of our, you know, class, our business development series, right? We have two live LinkedIn trainings. Now, Stephen, you didn't put the starting date of those live training classes on here. Shame on you. Can you please give those to everybody? Now, these live training classes are important because they're just like this. You can interact with us, ask questions. 
right? So we have these live training classes, and if you can't make them, they're recorded just like now. So if you're listening to the recording, you can listen to it over and over and over again. Now we do have corporate training deals where we will come in and train your whole team, your whole company, we'll do a whole conference, right? So January 23rd at noon central, we're in Chicago, it's noon central, it's online two live business development training classes. We give you further access to live coaching and training every single week. Like we're always running classes, right? So if you want to do our Social Jack network building class and build a referral machine out of your network, we teach you all of that. Those are all recorded classes on demand that you get instantly, right? Plus you get these two classes, plus you can go to the live classes over the next two months. I mean, that's as much as you can possibly get. What we do is it's $298 normally to get through all that. We have $98 for two live online LinkedIn business development classes starting January 23rd at noon central. Don't worry about the date because you can watch these over and over again even if you miss a live class and you can catch the next class. If you want this for your whole company, just type in there, I want this for my whole company, and one of our business development people will get with you. But if you go to LinkedIn98.com, you don't even need a coupon code. That will take you to a direct page where it looks like there's 15 left. And I believe, well, when those tickets run out, the price runs out. So let's just leave it that way. And Stephen, you have the wrong price on the screen there. You have $97. I don't know how you got that in there. So it's $98, LinkedIn98.com. Okay, LinkedIn98.com. You guys get LinkedIn on demand where you can start watching classes right away before the live class. And I guarantee you, money back guarantee, you will increase your business development. You will increase your sales. You will add people to your pipeline. Follow our system. I promise you. This is Dean Delisle. It's on the recording. Money back guarantee you will generate more business. Now, how many deals do you need to generate to get one to get ninety eight dollars back right linkedin ninety eight dot com right you get the linkedin beginner training even and some people go I'm a beginner well then take the beginner class you can start listening to that right away take our social jack training classes right you'll get both the recorded version and then you'll have access to the next live classes that we teach in social jack over the next couple months Look at that, you get a free ticket in to like almost $1,000 in corporate training. We should bump that value up. And then you get the, the advanced sales training in here too, right? And then you get those two uh, live uh, business development classes that start on January 23rd at noon central. But again, don't get hung up on the date. Go to LinkedIn98.com. And if again, if you need for your entire organization Right? If you want us to do this for your company, for your business, we have all kinds of packages that we can come in and help empower your team to get to that next level. But for a lot of people, we have a lot of you know, people that are just looking to take it to that next level. Right? So LinkedIn98.com. Now let me take some questions in here. Stephen, can you find some? Uh, and Stephen sent you guys the link that you can click on in the questions area there, so in the chat, so you guys can click on that link there. Now uh, real quick. Um, I assume it would be okay to delete connections from time to time, quarterly, annually. I know I have connections that I will never add value. Well, that will never add value and hold on to them. And please send us your questions right now. We'll make sure that we get those questions. Uh, unlikely event they will win the lottery and hold on to them. In the unlikely event they win the lottery, I agree with that, Michael. I took um, I took about a hundred people out in the last uh, at the end of the year, and I do it quarterly with some consciousness. Um, so I would say, uh, yeah, I would say, um, I would say quarterly is good. Uh, I wouldn't get too hung up on it. You know like when you see in your news feed and you just see the person in there, you can just click on the person and, and disconnect from the person altogether or you can hide them from your news feed. So I would say that's um, that's definitely a, a possibility there. Uh, but I agree with you, uh, Michael, that uh, yes, you want to take those people out. What value added for paid subscription versus a uh, free one on uh, free one on LinkedIn? What is the value versus? Oh, the paid subscription versus a free. Everything I showed you guys today is on the free version of LinkedIn. I just want to make that statement. 
Um, so every technique I showed you today and everything we teach you in our training classes on the free version. The one thing with the paid subscription, and this is a very common question, so Norman, great question. Uh, with that question, um, what you get is you get additional searches, you get additional access, you get visibility to see things that you couldn't see before. However, a lot of us are not doing the business development work, right? A lot of us have not done the business development work and building the relationship work and the simple things that I told you. If you do the things I told you, the paid stuff is just a bonus to see more. But I wouldn't worry about what you don't have. I would start using what you can use with the free version, and then when you bump up, bump up against the, the wall with that, um, then, then bump up your number of searches and the things you can see. Does that make Hopefully that helps you. But I would challenge anybody to use the free version, generate business first, and then pay for the upgrade. It's not like you're going to pay for the upgrade and business is going to flow in. I have yet to see anyone do that. I have friends at LinkedIn, and I know they'd be mad at me if they heard this, but it's recorded and they might. So uh, let's see. What other questions can I help you guys with? Uh, yes, we'll be sending the slides and the video. <laughs> and Miriam's like, we're moving on too fast. I just heard we can listen to this over again. Yes, you can. Uh, however, I would encourage that you guys do this training, this LinkedIn 98. Yes, and I'll put our contact information up here too. Um, so if you want to connect to me, uh, Dean Belisle, right? But put a note in there. Put a custom note in there, right? You can go to forwardprogress.net. We have all kinds of marketing services and things that you guys clicked on, and you're welcome to ask this. Um, uh, okay, so some people, yes, so some people are asking, do we have private training programs for that? Yes, we have custom, uh, um, uh, we have custom uh, programming, uh, well, we have custom coaching programs, that's probably the best, John. So, like, we'll have small coaching packages. So, let's say you want a three-pack of coaching, a five-pack of coaching, you can just uh, put that in there, and Stephen will get you more information on that for sure. So the idea here is that some people just need that one-on-one -on -one time. Now, what I will tell you is that um, I'll encourage you guys to do the LinkedIn 98, right? And let me put that back up here. Uh, and the only reason is because you get group coaching. And so a lot of you can't afford the, the packages, you know, that we have, the one-on-one the -on -one coaching packages that we have, not that they're crazy. Um, but, but, you know, you get group coaching. So you can come in in a format like this and ask whatever things you're struggling on, or, or we can put together a custom package with that business development. So Spencer, yes you can, I saw your question there, and thank you for that. Uh, let's see, I get lost on LinkedIn, I see a contact, then see similar contacts on their profile, or people who have viewed, I look at those, and it could go on forever. <laughs> it's the best way to prospect, that's why we give you, um, Doug, that's why in our class we give you the 20 minutes a day, and it's very focused, it's very intentional, right? And we have you start to whittle that down. But one of the things you can do immediately is what I told you early on, right, is to go in there and, and go, go and start hiding all the people that don't serve you. If you get into that habit and every time you log in you hide three or four people that really just don't matter that you're never going to talk to, think about a big networking event, you're whittling it down, you will wind up with the people that really matter so that when you log in they're already there. So when you log into your phone, your iPad, you know, your laptop, wherever it is, you go into that networking event, bam, you're right there. Let's see, what else do we need? Uh, any other questions that I missed? Good, good, I'm glad that helped you. Going once, going twice. All right, well, I expect to see you guys online. I looked at all your profiles ahead of time. I love to see when you guys update your profiles. Connect to us. Uh, don't forget you can connect to us on our Facebook page, our LinkedIn business page. We encourage you to follow that. Right? Just go to Forward Progress on LinkedIn under Companies, and you can stay tuned in to all of our webinars and our great content. Follow me on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. Go to our website, forwardprogress.net. And we love referrals, so if you can't afford to use any of our programs, please pass them along. Uh, we appreciate tons of referrals. So thank you, everybody, uh, and then we look forward to uh, seeing you. And send us your success stories. I forgot to say that. You guys have such great success stories. Please share them with us. We love to brag about you doing a great job, and even if you just take a few tips and generate an appointment and generates a deal, please share that with us. We love to hear about your success. All right, everybody. Well, with that being said, one final poll before we're out of here. Did you learn something new today? 
All right, looks like globally everybody learned. Just remember that one thing, right? I said one thing, walk away with one thing. Right, write that down and just go do it like right now. <laughs> I left you guys three minutes, right? Thank you, everybody. We're getting a lot of nice compliments, and we appreciate you too, and we appreciate your questions. It helps us tell us maybe how we can always improve these. So stay tuned to us, and we look forward to seeing you guys online and looking good, really awesome, and we will see you all real soon. Take care, everybody. We'll see you online. Welcome to GoToWebinar, webinars made easy. The organizer.